Hello, let me show you what I'm doing right now. Um, I have painted the power transformer. I got two coats on there. It came out pretty good. This is the uh, semi-gloss black paint. And uh, the chrome has some pits in it. But that's, that's to be expected. It's 75 year old transformer. So but the paint job came out reasonably okay. And then what I've done was I put on a, a retro old timey looking cord here. This cord is, uh, is the, the old fashioned kind with the, the cloth covering on it. So it needed one of those. And then I got an old timey plug here, plugged into my Variac here. And then uh, I got the speaker put together. This is the new speaker or the new old speaker and uh, this wire here crosses over goes to the other side of the voice coil and uh, I have just uh, taped that wire in place I guess I could use the tie wrap to to secure that better and I have the choke on there also and you notice I was able to mount the uh, audio transformer uh, perpendicular now so I was really happy about that and I have a 600 ohm uh, resistor that goes uh, to the B plus and that seems about right for most of the tubes and for the screen grids I got a little more on that a little later and then uh, what else did I do for uh, for protection I have a uh, this device here this is a uh, a uh, negative thermal coefficient device and this is called a inrush current limiter and this one was a CL80 and I got this at DigiKey and uh, General Electric uh, took over the company that makes these and this is good for a constant uh, 3 amps I think that's what the spec was on this but what this does this acts like a resistor that changes its value when it heats up so when it's cold it um, has a lot of resistance to it and then when it starts heating up it allows more current to flow through the radio so it, it limits your inrush current and I got this because I wanted to protect uh, the power transformer and the rectifier tube now purists may not like a semiconductor device sticking out of the radio like that and what I did was I double double heat shrunk on the leads there so it's it's not going to short out or anything like that so uh, I put this in to protect the radio and I put it above the chassis because it does get it does get hot so you want to uh, not have it underneath to start cooking things so that's how I did it and other people may do something different but that's just what I did to protect the radio and I also have a, a B plus fuse there that you could fish out and this goes to all the tubes except for the two power tubes here the 42 power tubes and what I noticed is that the power 42 power tubes they get the supply at the reserve capacitor that's the very first capacitor and what you call the pi capacitive filter and uh, let me show you something real quick here I drew this out and this this is a pi filter here and they call it because it resembles the Greek letter pi and the 42 tubes get the power from this capacitor here and there's there's ripple on here but it doesn't matter the way this push pull is configured the, ri the ripple cancels out and it doesn't matter but anyway what I wanted to say is that the center tap of the audio transformer it, the legs of, of the transformer goes to the place of the audio tubes, the power tubes. So this voltage was too high and I believe it was because of uh, this transformer has a lot less resistance than the original one. There's like less windings on it and more likely because they have better iron in it and a better kind of core. So it, it needed more resistance. You know, so I put a resistor in in there in series this is just temporarily as experimentation but let me show you something here too 
the uh, this rail is kind of heavy here. I'm gonna put the camera down for one second. It's got to prop this radio up on my prop rod here. Okay, these resistors here, right here, someone had put those in to uh, correct the problem with this bar power resistor. And this bar power resistor is covered with a piece of uh, just uh, cardboard, and that's mounted on the chassis itself for heat dissipation. Well, whoever put these in here, I guess they didn't do a really good job because the resistance is too low. It's supposed to be 4.7K and it's only 4K. And I ordered a, a new power resistor that I'm gonna put against the chassis over here so the chassis could dissipate the heat. These, these are kind of warm I don't, and they, they get hot actually. I, I don't want these getting hot inside the radio because it's too close to all these wires here. So, you know, I have to order, I ordered a new uh, resistor for that and um, and the screen grids tap off this resistor. So the screen grids were a little high because this resistance was a little low. Like it's supposed to be like 99, 100 volts, 101 volts and they're running like about 109 volts. So I got to fix that and then retest all the voltages again because when I adjust the voltage to the screen grids would change of these resistors is going to change the other voltages to the plate and stuff too. And when it also complicates, this is like the hardest part of the, the radio almost because what complicates it is that um, the Variac 100% is not 100% and also plugged directly into the isolation transformer, the voltage is slightly higher out of that. So that was kind of like a pain. But anyway, I'll power up the radio and we'll see what it sounds like. The speaker sounds pretty good. So I'm going to power it up here. And um, the speaker has a uh, adjustment in the cone. brokers and investors. It's time for NEI Global's commercial property power sale. Join us Friday, May 1st, as NEI Global offers $150 million in prime commercial real estate online at neiglobal.com slash power sale. You can see the, uh, the screw adjustment here. I was able to center this cone assembly by loosening that screw adjustment. And that centered the, uh, the cone, uh, how the, how the, uh, the intersection rides on the magnetic pole. So I got that going pretty good actually. Bump and crack. Time for a new windshield. If only she called St. Light sooner. When the chip's smaller than a dollar bill, we can usually repair it by injecting our state-of-the-art rest right into the chip. A repair is quicker than a replacement. And with most insurance plans, it's free. Yeah, free. Just one call to 1-800-800-ASAP takes care of everything. Okay, so that's what I'm doing right now. And um, the, the main thing here is to uh, get the new resistor in. These were only 5 watts, and I'm going to get a 10 watt unit, and that should run a little bit cooler. I'm going to put that against the chassis so it dissipates the heat. I don't want these things cooking inside the radio. And uh, I do have the B plus fuse that goes to the tubes except for the audio output tubes. And I have a 300 milliamp fuse in here. That was about the smallest they had here at Radio Shack. But I think the tubes take, um, I think they're like about 120 milliamps that they're pulling. So the 300 milliamp fuse, that's, I think that's pretty good for it. So don't quote me on that. But I'm trying to protect the radio with, um, because it had this kind of switch that was arcing before. So I don't need that switch to kind of get an arc going across there and to, uh, you know, burn up this, this resistor again here. And I did replace these resistors also because uh, they were out of spec. So basically every resistor is replaced in here except just a couple. We are back. President Obama today is out celebrating his first 100 days in Orifice. He went to my home state of Missouri. He went to Arnold, Missouri at